Khan do The Magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The makers of White King Soap present for your enjoyment, Chandu the Magician. Would you like to make magic your hobby? Want to do magic tricks just like Chandu? Then send today for Chandu's first magic trick offer. Chandu calls it the Assyrian money changer. It changes pennies into dimes right before your eyes. And you can have this trick for your very own by sending 25 cents and a white king box top to Chandu, Los Angeles 21. Listen, you take a penny from your pocket or handbag and lay it on the table. Then cover the penny with the mystic ruby block. Now remove the block while everyone watches closely. And behold, in place of the penny, there's a silver dime. Begin your collection of Chandu's magic tricks with this thrilling Assyrian money changer. Just send 25 cents in coin and the top from a box of White King soap to this address. Chandu, Los Angeles 21, California. Chandu will send you his Assyrian money changer, postpaid, complete with instructions. Send for Chandu's Assyrian money changer tonight. Swarthy looking man found lurking outside the old Vulcan castle where Frank Chandler and the regents are staying proves to be Vicente Gomez, once an agent of the sinister Roxor. Since Roxor's death, he is acting as a spy for anyone who will pay him. Under Chandler's questioning, Gomez admits he is in the employ of the mysterious Dimitri, whom Chandler suspects to be acting for the alien power plotting to conquer the country as a gateway to the Far East. Later, Chandler sends Bob and Betty down into the town on an errand. A furious rainstorm blows up, and in the deserted streets, they discover they are being followed by a ragged gypsy. Finally, unable to evade him, they turn and meet him face to face. Meanwhile, in the castle on the hill, Dorothy stands beside a narrow window, looking anxiously out into the rain-swept courtyard. Chandu. The magician. Dorothy. In here, Frank. Haven't Bob and Betty come back yet? No. I've been watching for them. The road up the hill must be a sea of mud. Well, if they'd come straight back, they'd have been here before the storm broke. I Frank, wonder. What have you done with that man? Gomez? I tied him up. He'll be all right until Bob gets back with that bolt for the door. But what if Dimitri comes there? Gomez can't let him in. All the furniture in the room's piled up against the door. Besides, Dimitri wouldn't take a chance on coming here to meet Gomez in the daytime. Well, why should he meet him here at all? At least I found that out. You know, this place has quite a history, Dot. The castle? Oh, yes, I know. Well, not the sorcery. Well, what is it, then? Well, you know the Balkans have always been a trouble spot. And apparently for generations, this castle's been a meeting place for men brewing revolutions or plotting assassinations or heaven knows what. But, Frank, you'd think with people living in the house... Yes, you would. Except that fellows like Gomez, with secrets to sell, always knew they could depend on the people living here. Oh, well, how do you mean? Well, I told you about Prince Ivan. But that was years ago. I have an idea people have always come and gone here, Dot. Whether the castle was occupied or not. Then you think Dimitri's trying to start a revolution? Well, I know there's something going on. And I'm going to find out what it is now, before I send Gomez away. Oh, heaven, that wind... I wonder where the children are. Well, they've taken shelter somewhere. They have more sense than to try to walk up here in a storm like this. Where are you going? Just to get the crystal. I'll set it here. Do you mind if I look into it with you? Of course not. Sit down, Dot. Do you see anything? Not yet. I must see Jan Metzos wherever he is. Frank... The foreign minister can't be working with Dimitri. I'm not so sure. There. It's a room. A library. But it's so clouded, I can't see. It's clearer now. Yes, there he is, 
sitting at his desk. And Dimitri. Oh, I see him. Now I know he won't be coming up here to meet Gomez. Then it is time to put Nicholas out of the way. Nicholas? So that's what they're up to. He will return with you to Paris, Dimitri. Send him to Paris by all means if you wish, but I shall not be with him. What is that? Yes, Metzos. I have decided to remain here for a time. It was not the arrangement. But still, I have grown very fond of your beautiful mountains. I cannot bring myself to leave them. The arrangement was definite. You have been established as a friend of Nicholas. The stories that death accompanies you everywhere have been accepted by these superstitious people. Indeed they have. Friend, <laughs> does he mean those things aren't true after all? Metzos may not believe them, but I know they're true. I am waiting for an explanation, Dimitri. When I explain my reasons, it will not be to you. Huh? Are you saying you have secret orders? I do not believe you. No. You came here for no other reason than to dispose of Nicholas. In a way that would convince the people we had nothing to do with it. We? Now I'll find out. And I have changed my plans. Suppose I should send a message to... Metzos! If you are so careless to mention his name, perhaps I may decide to send a message myself. Who is he talking about? I told you there was someone outside the country. Dimitri. Listen. Do not dare to interfere with me, I warn you. You warn me. You are <laughs> not the first man to imagine he was stronger than I am. Where are the others now? Oh, yes. In their graves. But you see... You will leave for Paris tomorrow with Nicholas? Unfortunately, I am too ill to travel. My own physician will call on you tonight. Thank you? No. My illness is all too familiar from uh, previous attacks. A rare ailment which will pass. You will leave for Paris tomorrow. First, having told Nicholas you brought me here and why. He has many friends, both here and abroad. Why, you insolent... I shall send a message at once. My friend, you will regret it. Were you sent here to spy on me to report to him? Let us... It would be a great blow to our work if your death should be one of those unfortunate accidents which befall my friends. I will not give up my place to you, Dimitri. I do not want it, my dear Metzos. And now that we understand each other, I have a call to make. Where are you going? Only to call on a beautiful lady. <laughs> Mr. Chandler's charming sister. Oh, Frank, no. In such a storm, she is sure to be at home. Uh, I might have known. Always there is a woman. On the contrary, you could not possibly know. Until tonight, then, shall we say? I won't see him, Frank. I wish you would, Dot. No. I won't leave you alone with him. I'll be in the next room. I'm afraid of him, and he knows he it. He can't, Dot. But he... he doesn't know what we saw on the crystal the other night. But why should he want to come here? That's just what I'd like to know. Please, Dot. Well, all right, Frank. But whatever happens, don't go away and leave me alone with him. I won't. But let him think you are. I'll be just inside the door. Why, uh, good afternoon, Your Highness. You are surprised to receive a caller on such a day? Didn't you have trouble getting up the hill? Uh, my horses are trained to do the impossible, like those of the gypsies. What? You are nervous. Uh, because of the storm, Mrs. Regent? No. The, uh, my family went down to Lebovo before the storm, and they haven't come back. Well, do not be alarmed. Uh, Nicholas tells me these storms end as suddenly as they begin. I hope so. Uh, so you are alone. I am fortunate. My son says you're staying on here for some time. Yes, I'm quite fascinated by uh, this country. It has great possibilities. I'm afraid I don't know much about that. Oh, you will, I am sure. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Regent, will you be here long? Why, I don't know. I understand that you had sent for a tutor for Bob and his sister. What? <laughs> you are surprised that I know it. Uh, Nicholas told me, of course. Oh, uh, you will be free to amuse yourself after the tutor has arrived, will you not? I'm planning to do a little sightseeing, yes. With um, Mrs. Mason, our consul's wife. Oh? I thought she was ill. 
Well, I... Will you not give me the pleasure of showing you around? Oh, I'm sorry, I... Uh, surely, your brother could not object. Oh, it's not... Or even your husband. Mrs. Richard, do you hear a peculiar sound? Like faraway music? No. I hope those gypsies aren't coming back. It is not gypsy music. Oh, well. As I was saying, Mrs. Regent, you are much too delightful to be shut up in this gloomy old castle. I could... No. Uh, Madame. I'm sorry. I... Uh, I can't make any engagements until after the children's tutor comes. The years are passing, Mrs. Regent. Are you satisfied to take nothing from them for yourself? Your husband shut away in his laboratory. Do you not hear the music now? No. And your conversation is in very bad taste. You are not a schoolgirl. Please go and don't come here again. At your pleasure, madame. It is unfortunate your brother is not at home to hear. He is at home. Frank, Frank! So that is why you did not dare to listen. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Chandler. My sister asked you to go. Ah, yes, the watchdog brother. Uh, Max Borden once told me, <laughs> but no matter. Roxor, told you what? Another day, madam. I promise you. Uh, good afternoon. There's somebody outside. Oh, no. Who is it? I can't see. Just... Oh, it's Betty and Bob. Frank, who is that with them? <laughs> The alchemist of old spent his lifetime trying to change base metals into silver and gold. But now Chan Du will teach you this secret of the ages. With his mystifying Assyrian money changer, you can change pennies into dimes. Chan Du will send you this magic trick for just 25 cents and a white king box top. Listen, place a penny on a table. Cover the coin with the mystic ruby block the magic money-changing block. Then utter the magic word, so coot. Now, remove the block, and in place of the penny, there is a silver dime. You boys and girls will want to start your magic collection with this Assyrian money-changer. Here's a fine pocket trick for you men to spring on your friends and business associates. And if you ladies want to be sure your guests have a good time at your next party... Try entertaining them with Chandu's magic trick. Just send 25 cents in coin and a box top from White King Soap to Chandu, Los Angeles 21, California. That's Chandu, Los Angeles 21. Make magic your hobby. Make White King your wash day soap. You'll love White King. Chandu the Magician is produced and directed by Cyril Armbruster. Dorothy Regent is played by Irene Tedrow. Dimitri is played by Lou Krugman. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu the Magician. <laughs> This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>